good to have everybody here. We're going to talk a little bit about the market. Privileged to have Mark Fenton with me. Mark and I have been uh, teaching and trying to navigate through the market for many years. I'm going to share a little bit about uh, at least the next class I think I'm going to be doing. Uh, but we're going to talk a little bit now about the market. Mark, you want to just take a couple minutes and maybe bring up screen, just kind of give your thoughts on the market, maybe give something. Yeah, sure. Get, and then I'll jump in here. All right. Trading Share through this crazy screen. market as we, we've... If, uh, Absolutely insane. So the market, of course, is just a few points from all-time highs. Once again, just, what is it, 30 points? All-time high being uh, 38, 70, 90. So to me, I think you have to respect a couple of things. You have to respect that we got a market that's in a parabolic move up. The disregards pretty much any negative information mm -hmm. and and goes higher, probably fueled by, you know, the Fed's uh, making money very cheap and and buying assets and all these things and and then talking about being more accommodative in the future. So the market's just it's like a kid in a candy store. Uh, with a million dollars. That's all it is. It's just eating and eating and eating and eating. Um, you know, and uh, so you have to respect that. Uh, yeah, that always ends. This won't end well. Of course it won't. But when will it end? That's the problem. Uh, so the thing is, you have to respect that we could continue higher. But you cannot be blind to the fact that we're at all time highs. And, and something, you know, many times when you're at highs like this, Something that upsets the apple cart could drop us lower significantly. Look at the other day. I mean, we had a, we were down at the beginning of Friday, and by the end of the day, we're down like 82 in the SPX. I mean, when this thing does its thing, it does its thing. Look at the VIX. Peaceful, peaceful, bam. Peaceful, peaceful, bam. That's what the SPX does. This is the VIX. The VIX spikes when the SPX goes down. So every one of these things you're seeing are tumultuous down moves, right? And of course, it went down hard the other day. But even by the end of the day, I was saying, hey, you got to respect the fact we could come right back because this market likes to do that. And what did we do? Well, we put on over 100 points in two days or right at it on our way back. Now, how much further will this continue? I don't know. That's why I don't like to pick direction. But I think things you can do while we're here is say, all right, I'm going to respect that you can go to the upside. But at the same time, uh, I want to have a little bit of room on the downside because I think that things can go wrong there. So I think that a lot of times if you do something a little more non-directional, it gives you room close to an all-time high, maybe up around 3,800, a little below. But also gives you that 40, 50 point down move so you can at least uh, have some room on the downside in your trade, 50, 60 points, whatever it would be, that's a fairly attractive trade to me. Um, wasn't sure, Dan, did you want me to show a trade? Um, yeah, could you? Yeah, I could show that one I showed earlier today. Yeah, I thought that was an interesting one, Mark. What's that? I thought that was a good one. Yeah, well, let's look at that. So what if we went out to February 5th. That's this Friday, folks. I don't normally do trades this short term, but we're going to talk about, you know, you know, as I say, when in Rome, do what the Romans do. We got to do something that we're acknowledging all the things I just talked about. But what if I went out and say got a 3820 put calendar or call calendar? Either one would be fine in SPX by selling this Friday and buying this Monday, just three days between the short and the long. Now, absolutely, this is not normal trading. This is uh, really speculative trading. This isn't, you know, something that we do all the time. I want to be clear on that, but I just think there's a real opportunity here. If we, let's make this 38.30. So if we go to 38.30, it's a little below where we're trading. And uh, for the fifth and the eighth, here in SPX calendar, what have we got? Well, first off, let's say this. We got theta of 120 bucks a day right here. 119.93, it'll probably be over 120 tomorrow. And Vega is 51. So I like that. I like that in this environment where volatility is, is a little up, but hey, it could go down further. Okay, 
could it go up further? You bet it can. We just saw it was 10 points higher, what, a week ago or less. And um, so volatility, though, won't be able generally to affect us as fast as theta is going to work for us. So if, if volatility happened to work against us, generally that would mean the VIX went down. We'd still have theta working pretty good clip, even though volatility is working against us here. But, and then you have, of course, price. If it moves too far, it doesn't matter what volatility does, this trade's in trouble if we blow up too far. So my idea with this trade is you put it on today and you absolutely 100%, no doubt in your mind, take it off tomorrow, no matter what. So you put on a trade, maybe you pay five, 185, maybe around $6, $600 for a one lot. And tomorrow we take it out. Maybe we'll get a 10% profit. I don't know. But this trade comes off tomorrow. And all I did is I moved this day forward one till tomorrow. So tomorrow, just based on theta, this is what our daily line should look like, that we should be up money. Now, what can affect that? Of course, if we move all the way up here, not going to be up as much money. Move all the way down here, also not going to be up as much money, right? And the middle is where we want to be, but we don't have to be. So you wake up tomorrow morning and we open up at, up here at um, 3870 area. You'll probably be flat, maybe even down a few dollars. You could watch it a little. I wouldn't watch it long if it tried to go up at all. Just take it off. You'll be down little or nothing. Same thing down here. And if it's anywhere in here, you know, and you can watch it. You could watch it a little bit. Watch it wander around here. You'll probably have 15, 20% sometime tomorrow morning. Wouldn't surprise me if we just hang around in this area. Shouldn't be hard to do. So it's a way of doing a very quick trade in this market. Uh, it's not super expensive. Of course, you always, you know, always be mindful. You know, we could open up down 100 and this trade would be shot. We could open up at 3,900. This trade would be in big trouble, right? We just have to take it off. So whenever you put a trade like this on, you always think about how bad the loss could be. So put it on at a size you can stand. If you want something smaller than this, you could try it in SPY. It's just one-tenth the size of SPX. Yeah, I mean, this... I think this trade has decent potential, but I, I, one thing perfectly clear, you've got to take it off tomorrow. You've got to. Don't get to tomorrow and have it hanging around here and you're up 20, 30% and you think, oh, I'm going to go the next day. No, 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 no. No, it comes off tomorrow, if not today. You know, like if Brendan here says he put it on a little bit ago, he's up 4 or 5%. You can take that off right now. Who, anybody make 4 or 5% the day ever gone broke? If you make 4 or 5% every day, I can assure you, you're not going broke, right? And hey Mark, would you do that at the money or do you like it with the Well, I did it just below it. Is I did it at 38.30, but could you do it at 38.40? I suppose you could. Um, it just gives you a little less down room, but a little more up room. So if that makes you feel better. I mean, I think that's fine too. Yeah. Either of those is fine. I think the key is we're looking for it to at least hold you know, in a, in a fairly tight area, maybe 40 points up, 40 points down and get out tomorrow. And if it, if the, if the wild animal slows down to take a breath overnight and we stay around the center for the first little bit tomorrow, you'll, you'll easily, I would say have 20%, 15, 20. So that's kind of a trade idea I had, Jan. All right, Mark, I think that looks, uh, that looks as they say splendid. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, good trade idea for today, folks, if, you know, based on, you know, we always try to trade what the market's giving us, right? Instead of what's going to happen in the future, none of us know. So, well, thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. And I'll just okay. a bit of time. Hey, everybody, have a good day and good luck with that. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks, Mark. All right, folks. I want to talk a little bit today about Iron Condor. I think that's going to be the next class as we're trading through this crazy market. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit, and then we'll look at an example. But I think, you know, I always try to, each month, we do a new online class, a three-week class that goes Tuesdays and Thursdays. I try to find what I think will be the most helpful, most applicable for the given uh, market. So I'm calling this All Season Iron Condors. Uh, it's a three-week class that starts next Tuesday, Feb 2nd, class days and times, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, one central. All such classes are recorded uh, in case you're working. Uh, 
PowerPoints for the classes I do uh, will be on the class page. And there's also a Q&A button on the class page, which is nice. You know, if you watch it after at night or on the weekend or two months after the class is over, the button's still there. And uh, the three-week class, each class goes uh, about an hour, at least an hour, It'd be 297. Mark and I will be uh, co-hosting that. Um, possible iron condor topics. I haven't finished the outline that just to give you an idea of what I'm going to be uh, looking at. So you'll learn a lot different things. Uh, talk about a high theta iron condors. Again, different variations and how to trade this basically in any uh, environment. High theta iron condors uh, where how do we maximize the theta on these things and minimize the time we're in it? One-sided iron condors. Uh, why we would start with one side and why? Uh, because of the unique volatility skew in the, uh, in the indexes. Uh, a lot of times we may start with the put side and we'll go over that. Uh, how to actively trade an iron condor. Uh, this is an exciting way for those who like to trade a little more. Uh, you may start out with an iron condor as a call credit spread and a put, but how do you start with both? And even like a 40, 50 day iron condor, you think, oh, I'm going to be in this a long time. How to maybe get out of this in a week. And, uh, and uh, so we'll explain that method. Hedged iron condor. Uh, I touched about this in a one day class in around the correction in March or so. Uh, but this will just be go uh, and this will be going over some other ideas on hedged iron condor at the beginning of a position. Stock iron condors. What are the best uh, stock iron condor candidates that we think? And I'll give you a list of them, and we'll talk about them and how they're different, much different than trading an iron condor and SPX or RUT. Uh, best iron condor adjustments for the upside and downside. We'll discuss those. Uh, equidistant for same delta iron condors. You know, do you start it with the call side, the same distance from the price as the put side that would be equidistant? Or if you do an iron condor where you're choosing the short strikes by the delta, if you do them the same delta, you're going to get a lot more room on the downside. So how do you start it? I think this is where a lot of people ran into problem with iron condors. In the uptrending market we've had the last seven years, they just uh, they put on the wrong, wrong type of iron condor. Short duration versus long duration. We'll show you how we kind of mix those together. Uh, so you can see we're going to cover quite a very practical uh, uh, seminar. And uh, a broken wing iron condors. How do we... Uh, what if we're more concerned with one side versus the other? Can we have less risk on one side? And then asymmetrical iron condors. We'll have Jay Bailey or will be teaching that class. And that's a uh, unique way of trading a iron condor using a debit spread. And then using the VIX, what are the best VIX levels to put on iron condors? At what VIX levels don't we? So if you really want a good... Uh, master's level course in iron condors. Uh, I think this will be a, a, a great practical, this will not be theory, practical uh, class of all the different techniques we use on these iron condors. So you can trade them in different uh, weather environments. We'll be putting live iron condors, all these different, or different types, every class. And even for, for beginners, I'll start with a basis and we'll, we'll uh, I think, with the live trades and that you can follow along with on paper, depending on your experience. Um, but I'll explain these. I usually take quite a bit of time explaining these things. So I think whatever level you're at, you'll get a lot in, into this. All right, here's an example I took up of an iron condor today. You guys can see this. Uh, this particular, just this was an example, just strictly an example. This isn't the only one we'll be covering. This is just a longer term iron condor. <clears throat> I was looking at an SPX, 45 day SPX iron condor. And this was about the VIX level uh, 
that uh, that we're at uh, today. Uh, VIX has been down 12 points in less than a week. So as you see this, you can see here's the here's the price, and we're looking to sell. 4130 call. So you can see the first part of a iron condor is you're just doing an out of the money call credit spread. We're selling the 4130s and then we're buying the 4140s as basically a hedge. Uh, on the put side, we're selling the 3440 puts and we're buying the 3430s 10 points away as a hedge. So we're doing 10. Uh, 10 wide uh, credit spreads, the distance between the long and the short is 10. And we're selling, you know, the whole reason we do an iron condor is to sell an out of the money call and an out of the money put. What is that strategy called? What is the foundation of an iron condor called? What is it? What's the foundation of an iron condor called? Anybody know? Vertical. No, the foundation being, um, yes, it, it, that is correct, Seth. You're doing verticals, two credit spreads, yes, but you're selling a strangle. The whole reason we do this trade is to sell the out-of-the-money put, sell the out-of-the-money call. So we're getting time decay in our favor. We're getting probabilities in our favor. It's kind of like an insurance company, isn't it? Right? They're They're selling... You guys are buying insurance through the insurance company. Are the probabilities high based from their actuarial work, I would guess? Are the probabilities high that if Rich pays or Ron or Viral Dave pays $1,000 a month for insurance, are the probabilities high that the insurance company is going to collect more than they pay out? Are they going to collect more than they pay out? Do insurance companies, yeah. And but what do insurance companies do to, you know, our risk management is we have long options against our shorts, and also our risk, our our risk management is we can do adjustments and uh, and we don't have to put it on in certain environments that we don't want. How do insurance companies, how do insurance companies spread off their risk? Can they do it? Is there a word for that? Again, I don't have any experience in the insurance company. Can't they, if they sell too much, can't they, can't they give up some of their, if they have too much shorts, can't they lay some of that off? I would imagine, but they have ways of doing it. But again, it's a high probability business. Iron condors are a high probability business. You're selling the call and the put far enough out of the money. And this is a short strangle. We're protected by buying our out of the money call and put. And we're, in this case, we're buying at 10 points further out of the money. A lot of times we'll buy at 20 points out of the money. Thank you, Dan. That's the word I was looking for, reinsurance. Um, they buy, re thank you. Um, I knew there was a word for that. And But what is the problem? I mean, would I, I would have no problem selling an out of the money call and put it for one reason, right? I mean, that's the real reason I want to do this. I don't want to do this trade to buy the longs. I mean, the real reason I want to do this is sell an out of the money call and put over time with the probabilities uh, in my favor, I'll win if I can control the risk management, have some kind of risk management plan. But why don't I do this? Why don't we just go sell the out of the money put and call and sell strangles? Why don't we usually do this? Why? I mean, there's two reasons. Um, number one, um, yeah, unlimited loss on the up. I mean, plenty of loss on the down, you know, tremendous loss. But there's two other big reasons. The, the margin, if, if, if you were to sell one out of the money put and call an SPX, do you realize how much they would charge you at your brokerage firm? A ton. And if they would charge you a ton, ultimately, what does it affect? Your yield. So the main reason I do iron condors over naked shorts, your yield's going to be a lot better, right? You're tying up too much capital 
It's just not worth it, right? And I'm not saying some people don't do it in certain situations, like in a portfolio margin account, you know, someone's very good at it, but you know, this makes a lot more sense. Because you can look here, if we're bringing in a credit here of $1.90 by doing the call and the put credit spread, right? So the main, what's the main advantage of an iron condor over just a call credit spread or an iron condor over a put credit spread? What's the main advantage? of an iron condor, two credit spreads versus one. What's the main advantage of an iron condor versus just a call and put credit spread? Yeah. Well, because you have two credits, you're gonna have a higher yield potential. Um, yeah, you can't lose on both sides, um, but it's mainly a better yield and a better margin because now you have two credits going against the margin. Now the advantage of a credit spread, you have risk on one side um, with this. Um, and one of the things we're gonna teach in the class is just you know, when to trade an iron condor, when to not. I think that's just as important. People look at adjustments, that that's how many people think the most important thing in risk management is adjustments, yes or no? How many people think the most important thing in in adjust is the adjust? It really, it's one of the least, right? It's important, but it's one of the least. You know, one of the things we'll be teaching you, especially with iron condors in the class, kind of our four-step risk management. You know, number one, setting up the trade. How do you set up an iron condor? You know, based on the VIX, based on market conditions, A, should you do one, right? That's most important. Should you be in the market doing it? A lot of people just are in iron condors all the time. We're not. We're in most of the time, but not all the time. So A, should you be in? B, what duration should you be? C, what strikes should you be? So setup is crucial, right? I think that's more than the... Uh, uh, adjustments. Number two, profit target, uh, P&L, P&L and max loss, right? When do you get out for a profit? When do you get out for a loss? That is more important than adjustment, right? This is your most important thing. These two, one and two. Number three, when you adjust, that's more important than your adjustment. And number four is your adjustment, right? But your, your max loss is more important. You know, if you're going to put, you know, 50 iron condors on a year every week, you know, in most situations, you're going to win 70, 80% of the time. It's just how much do you lose on the ones you lose, right? So that's the most important thing. Adjustment is simply, hey, a trade's going against me. How do I tweak it, reduce my delt, you know, my, my delta exposure and stay in a little longer, stay in the trade a little longer till it reverses, right? But many times with it, with iron condors, we don't even adjust them, right? We just put them on, take them off. But you, you know, these three steps are crucial. These are the range bound part of the portfolio. So in terms of, you know, when you look at the Greeks, which are like your panels in an airplane, you know, Deltas and gamma deal with price risk. So we normally keep our deltas closer to zero. These are positive theta trades. Decay, our shorts, because they have more extrinsic value than our longs, are going to decay more. And vega, we benefit if, if generally, we'll just keep it simple today, if VIX uh, decreases, that will benefit the iron condors. But there's a, there's a lot of, again, this is a craft. Trading iron condors successfully is a craft. And, and, and that's what we're gonna focus on more the craft, the practical part of this. Yeah, you can hedge before, uh, well, you can hedge when you put the trade on. If you're concerned, that's where the hedging takes place. I look at hedging as something that takes place when you put the trade on at the beginning. Adjustment is once the trade starts and the SPX can freely move, 
what you do after you put it on like the next day or whatever, that would be called an adjustment. So this should be a very intensive class, but if, if you really are trying to take a strategy and turn it into a profit center and make some, you know, make some money, whether it be a couple hundred or a couple thousand or more per month, that's where we're going to focus on the craft. This isn't just what is an iron condor, even though we'll go over that. We'll go over all these things, but the key is practical so that by the end of the six sessions or three weeks, you have enough, you've been taught enough, you've had enough practical enough experience that you can go through with this on one contract and you have an idea of moving towards independence. You have some guidelines that will keep you as long as you, again, continue with small trades till you get even better at the craft. But that's what we're trying to establish here. So um, class starts next Tuesday. If you have any questions, you can email me, dan at sharedmentoring.com. You can sign up. I don't think we have the sign up page ready yet, but it should be probably by tomorrow. And uh, look forward to seeing you. So our all-season Iron Condors, again, starts next Tuesday. Uh, Jay will be teaching a class. Mark will be on with me most, but it'll be uh, extremely practical. Uh, Mark says, is this still a climate to do some put credit spreads? Yeah, I mean, as long as we're above the moving averages, I, I think, um, I mean, we'll be talking about that during class. Um, maybe starting with put credit spreads and how to add call credit spreads to it. But um, again, you know, the market the last four days has gone crazy. You know, how many people would, would think, you know, net, net, the SPX really hasn't gone anywhere the last four or five days. We went down terrifically up, down almost 4%, back up almost 4%. And, but when you get this, you know, huge, uh, you know, four, four days in a row of one and a half to 2% moves. If this thing straightens out, it could really go one way or the other. So, and I don't know, you know, I mean, it's, it's, I have no idea which way we'll go, but you know, when you get this kind of, you know, one and a half to 2% moves in the SPX, it makes it very difficult to manage some of these trades. So that's one of the nice things that we'll be doing this class through a little more volatility so we can show you how we would do them you know, and give you the uh, information and practicality in different weather conditions, right? Well, you know, if you trade iron condors or credit spreads, it's not always going to be, okay, do a put credit spread, it goes up, or do an iron condor and that move. So, you know, if you're serious about learning, uh, you know, if you've traded credit spreads and you're serious about credit spreads or learning iron condors, trying to get a strategy that you uh, – could turn into a profit center. This would be a good opportunity for you uh, and uh, learn a lot of different uh, tips for that. All right, folks. Well, thank you for coming in here. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys Tuesday and have a wonderful day. Thank you.